You got it off, at least you can. There you go. There. Well, I think Look, got it. There. I mean, that's the best I can do. I just hold it for a bit, see if this goes up. Thank you. 
Good afternoon and welcome to the Rotary Club of Savannah's January 31st, 2022 meeting. Our soloist today is David Lotz, a chorus member of the Savannah Philharmonic. Well, if you all feel uh, comfortable, you're welcome to join me in singing. I'm going to be singing America the Beautiful. Let's see. 
All oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountains' majesty above the fruited plain. America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Rick Monroe will now give our invocation. If you feel comfortable, you pray with me. I'll pray in a lower key than the song. <laughs> Some of us had a hard time with it. Join me, please. Father God, we pause on a busy day to acknowledge you as the giver of every good and perfect gift, the gift of fellowship around these tables, and the gift of food to nourish, energize, and uh, promote healthy bodies. Today, we ask that you would bless us and keep us, that we might be free to bless others and keep peace in our small part of the world. May you make your face to shine upon us that we might reflect your light to bring light to any darkness we encounter. May you turn your face toward us and give us peace, that we might sense your watchful eye, and the peace that comes from knowing you, offer, uh, knowing that you offer guidance and wisdom to all who seek. And may we live the greatest commandment, to love you, the Lord our God, with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and our neighbor as ourselves, passing your two-way test, which ensures we'll always pass Rotary's four-way test. I make this prayer with thanksgiving, that you reveal to us the way, the truth, and the keys to abundant life. Amen. Please be seated. I like to now have past president Eddie Culver come to the podium and introduce our visiting Rotarians and guests. Thank you, President Marjorie. It is my pleasure to introduce our guests and visiting Rotarians today. As I call your name, please stand and remain standing. And at that time, we'll welcome you as a group to our club. Our visiting Rotarians are Ray Rayback from the Arlington, Virginia Club, John Clements from Skidaway Island, Ann Codero from Savannah South, and our guests today are Leslie Ott, who is guest of Marjorie Young. We have Judge Ben Karp, guest of Judge Tim Walmsley, and Tim, you certainly made Savannah and your Rotary Club proud. Laura, Laura Simpson, and Brianne Yance from Convention Consultants, guest of Deanne Mitchell. And we have Walter Evans, guest of Paul Presley. Let's join them giving them a warm Rotary welcome. Thank you, Eddie Culver, and welcome everybody to our meeting. I'd also like to welcome everybody on Zoom today. I have asked Dr. Ben Spitanek to be our virtual greeter. Ben, how many, can we tell how many people we have on, on Zoom today? 30. Was that 30? 30. Okay, great. Thank you, Ben. Uh, we can't see you, but we're, okay, but we heard you. All right, so welcome, everybody. I'd now like to have the honorary member and past president, Judge Louisa Abbott, come to the podium and introduce our newest member. Good afternoon, fellow Rotarians. We're all sort of taking our lives in our hands up here because if you back up more than about eight inches, you're just gonna flip right over backwards. And I don't know how you lean over this far, Marjorie. I'm gonna pull this thing forward. Well, yeah, this feels so comfortable. I have the, I have the great honor and um, really I'm so thankful for this opportunity to introduce a new member who comes in as additional active uh, with Judge Tim Wamsley, uh, you know, the one of the few specific 
memberships classifications designated in the Rotary bylaws and constitution is for a superior court judge. And that specifically was done because ordinarily, of course, the rules are you can not get into ro this Rotary Club based upon holding an elected position. If you are already a member and become elected, but only Superior Court judges are permitted in under that exception. And so, um, of course, we have a number of other judges of different um, classes of courts, as I say. Judge Gobeil joined last week, which is fantastic. Um, we have um, Federal District Court uh, Judge Moore. We, of course, had Judge Charlie Michael from the Court of Appeals. And now we have Judge Lisa Colbert. She's been a judge for a while here and um, has been a resident here for um, off and on for a good bit of her life. I suspect that she already knows a number of you who are here and out there in um, Zoom world. And so um, for those of you who don't know Lisa, you will uh, very quickly get to know her because Lisa is one of those people who will make herself visible in your life in a way that will impress you. Lisa is always exactly who she is. Um, what you see is what you get, and what you get is a lot. So um, she's had a terrific career that's brought her to this really wonderful position. And I do think it's always a good idea to mark historic moments um, as they occur. Um, there have been four female Superior Court judges in Chatham County, which of course is the oldest superior court in the state, the easternmost in, in Georgia. Um, so we were the earliest. Um, she is the first African American woman to serve as a superior court judge, uh, as she was the first black woman to serve as a juvenile court judge in Chatham County. And just to let you know um, how extraordinary that is. Um, I walk by the picture uh, in the hall every day of the 1941 Savannah Bar, and there are four women uh, in uh, the picture of about 80 men. Uh, there are no black people. Um, and in fact, Chatham County sits in the first district, uh, which is basically the first congressional district as originally drawn, not as subsequently changed, but so all the way from uh, Tuckahoe up in Scriven County, down to the boggy mud bog park in Charlton County, which is about as far south as you can go in southeastern Georgia, there is not a single other female Superior Court judge or black Superior Court judge, nor have there ever been except for one down in Glen, Glen County. We're making progress uh, in our justice world, but in Chatham County, we have always been the most diverse bench and uh, we are proud to say the most collegial. We've certainly had no difficulty in assimilating Judge Colbert because Judge Colbert served as a staff attorney to Superior Court um, during her profession. She actually served as staff attorney for me when I first um, became a judge. And um, from the moment I met her, um, as with everyone else who's met Lisa and knows Lisa, you just know this, I want to know this person. I want to work with this person. Many others have had that wonderful uh, opportunity as well. I do want to mention um, in specific that Lisa's roots here are also historic. Um, she is the very proud daughter of Anne Goldwire who, for those of us who uh, were in high school when the schools integrated in Georgia, uh, will remember the challenges and difficulties when students were asked to step up and to go to the white schools. Lisa's mom um, was one of those young women, was the one young woman, along with the one young man, attorney Sage Brown. He went on to serve our country in Vietnam and had a long legal career here. So she comes from the best of the best. Uh, and I could say that because I've known her and her family. She is a UGA graduate, so yes, 
She will wear red and black on the appropriate occasions. Um, so she's also a veteran. She was in the Georgia Air National Guard because when she decided she wanted to move on with life, having been raised up for a while in the Brooklyn, the Henry Street area, or there was, was Flatbush, you were right in Flatbush. Um, so she had her street smarts, her school smarts and everything else, and then she went in the military and um, she learned to take directions up to a point, right? Uh, just, just well enough, just well enough to, um, to always move ahead in her life and never just accept the status quo. She worked for a big law firm in Atlanta, Georgia, and like a lot of us, um, upon having a, a child, she and her husband, E.J. Coldress, also a longtime uh, lawyer, he's just recently retired from the Corps of Engineers here. Um, you may have seen E.J. on his bicycle and may still see him, his 60 miles a day uh, around the city. Um, she came back home, went straight back into practicing law, worked with Charles Bell, a great outstanding lawyer here in town. Um, she worked in the Chapter 13 bankruptcy um, area, and then because um, she had done such an outstanding job in all of these areas, she was singled out and asked to be the assistant county attorney by our longtime county attorney, Jonathan Hart. Now, representing the Chatham County Commission and Chatham County, you learn a little bit of everything. So she's had this great, well-rounded experience, but her love her first love and the love that she has pursued through her legal career is um, the interest of children. Uh, she has been vigilant with the school board. She worked very closely on the school board on the audit committee for many years. Um, she was a leader in CASA and the development of that truancy intervention. She was um, on the Georgia Council of Juvenile Court Judges uh, family court judges, national level. She has um, put all of her passion, all of her discipline to work, been recognized over and over for it in our community. Um, she's a graduate of Leadership Georgia and all of the graduates of that program um, know um, that uh, that gives you such a breadth throughout the state of Georgia. She's most recently been recognized by Georgia Legal Services Program as the 2018 champion of justice uh, for her commitment uh, to justice for all in our community. I believe Lisa is going to be an outstanding and extraordinary member of this club. And I'm very, very personally proud uh, to introduce her to you today. So, Marjorie. Be careful. <laughs> Lisa, congratulations on being inducted to the Rotary Club of Savannah. Here's your red badge. Uh, you'll wear that for six months. You'll help welcome people coming in. Uh, we ask you to get involved with a committee. And our vision for Rotary is together we see a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change across the globe, in our community, and in ourselves. We'd now like to welcome you to the Rotary Club of Savannah. Thank you. Congratulations. All right. Thank you, Louisa. That was a wonderful introduction for our new member. I'd now like to give out some new blue badges. Uh, these uh, members attended the orientation on January 24th at the Elegant 45 Bistro. The orientation was given by Rick Belford, Eddie Culver, Philip Solomons, Nina Gompels, and Rick Monroe. So uh, let's see, I see Lori Pitt, come on up. Exchange that red badge. Very good. At Tammy Mosley, I saw you here. That's okay. And Ron, is Ron McGee here? Well, he can. Oh, there he is. He's in the back. Come on up, Ron. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. 
I now like to have Dr. Roland Summers come to the podium to receive his Paul Harris Plus Two Fellowship pin. On behalf of the Rotary Club Foundation and the Rotary Club of Savannah, it is my honor and privilege to recognize Dr. Roland Summers for his continued monetary contribution to support the good works of Rotary. You exemplify service above self. Please help me to congratulate uh, Dr. Roland for becoming a Rotary Foundation Paul Harris Plus Two Fellow. I now like to ask Ann Cadero from the Rotary Club of Savannah South to please come to the podium, come on up, for a check presentation. This um, past few months, all of the Rotaries have been working together to raise, you can come on up here, um, to raise money for the Wormslow tree. Well, maybe not, okay. <laughs> yeah, watch your step. There you go, Ann. If I fall off, that's paperwork, so no paperwork. <laughs> it is my pleasure to present to you today from the Rotary Club of Savannah South, a check for $1,500 for the tree project. That's three more trees. We have 75 to go, so that's really exciting. So thank you, Rotary Club of Savannah. I mean, um, uh, South. There's a lot of other clubs, too, that have donated. Actually, all of them have, so that's really been fun working for everybody. All right. We, today, we are launching a project called the Rotary Leadership Series, where we showcase past presidents to remind us of the expert leadership that has shaped this club for the past 108 years. So thank you to Stagefront, Clay, uh, for creating these short videos. It's about five minutes. And uh, thank you to the committee who made these interviews possible. I'd like to have Julie Olson come up to introduce our first interview. I thought we were the same height. <laughs> All right, so we've had, we're kicking it off today with our inaugural interview was with Rick Monroe. And I know most of you know Rick, but I'll tell you just a little bit. Rick is the owner of Monroe Marketing. He also was the president of this club from 2015, 2016. He is a graduate of the University of Georgia Journalism School. Yes, go dogs! Bunch of us up here this week. And he also has helped a lot of businesses, local businesses, to grow through their strategic marketing. So let's learn a little more about Rick. Oh, good afternoon. I'm Julie Olson, and I'm one of the newer Rotarians. And we wanted to learn more about Rotary and some of our past presidents. So today we're going to start learning from Rick Monroe, one of our past presidents who is very committed to the community and exemplifies service over self. So thank you for joining us today. Well, I'm glad to be here. Too. I'm excited to talk with you and learn about from you. So tell me a little bit about, I know you're so involved in the community. What's one of your favorite charities and why? Well, I think the United Way, of course, is, a, is kind of a, what would you say, ecumenical. It helps the community. Mm -hmm. In the larger community, my favorite uh, charities are uh, Salvation Army, mm -hmm. uh, Samaritan's yeah. Purse, right. and Red Cross because they have very low overhead. They're very immediate in the work, uh, help they provide. And um, they have a record of integrity, which gives me confidence when you uh, provide funding. Oh yeah, that is so important. That's so important, great charities. Well, let me find out something a little more personal. You ready? Yeah, why not? Nobody's, <laughs> nobody's listening, go ahead. <laughs> What's one of your favorite meals? Oh, my favorite meal. Well, my wife, te we, we go to these restaurants that has food I can't pronounce. I always Ooh, tell okay. her if it's, not on the, if it's not on the menu at Cracker Barrel, I'm not really that interested. <laughs> so um, any kind of comfort food to serve at Cracker Barrel is just fine with me. As long as I can pronounce it, I'll eat it. Well, that's great. <laughs> uh, my husband's a big Cracker Barrel person, too. So you're good. very good, good very good. good. Yes. Well, let me, you know, I do personal development, leadership development, and so it's always important to me to hear about experiences that might have framed your success. Is there something you've experienced 
or a, a learning experience that you've had that has helped you be more successful? <laughs> Well, I'm a people. I, I enjoy being around people smarter than I am. And that's easy to find. But I, I learn from others in two yeah. ways. Uh, I work with a lot of teenagers, and I always tell them that the, 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 the second smartest people in the world are people who learn from their mistakes. The smartest people in the world are people who learn <laughs> from the other people's mistakes. That's right, and that takes some uh, observation, so, right? So, you know, I learn from other people's mistakes, but also from their I just enjoy watching people think and try. They raise the bar a lot of times for me. Uh, by the way, I find when I when you raise the bar, you either can uh, high jump or limbo. <laughs> I choose to try to high jump, and they, they help me with that. That's good. That's a great perspective. Okay, so Rick, we know you've got some excitement and enthusiasm. Well, yeah, hyper. Hyper. <laughs> So what song do oh, you just gosh. sing when it comes on? You just well, belt it out. Well, aside from getting the 1-800 Cars for Kids jingle stuck in my brain, <laughs> uh, I think In My Life, John Lennon's song is, is one that I sing along with because it's, it's just a great song and it means a lot. To me. And which one? Uh, John Lennon, In My Life. In it's My Life, old okay. Song. okay. It came okay. out before you were born, but it's okay. <laughs> Probably not. So what inspirational quote do you wish you had penned? <laughs> wow, uh, I, I started to tell you it is what it is because I would, would copyright that and make a fortune out of royalties because uh -huh. it gets used all the time. But I think mm -hmm. um, I think the Rotarians probably heard me say many times when I was president, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you get what you pay for and I'm working for free. Uh, <laughs> but that's not really a, much of a quoted quote except for me, but there's probably a reason for that too. <laughs> no, and I'm sure they got more than they paid for, Rick. I'm sure of that. The Savannah. community of Savannah, when you look at issues facing the community, ah, okay. what is a big one that you think we'll have to address in the next 10 years? Well, I think the, the overriding one that I think of is agendas. You've got to overcome agendas. I think a lot of times I envision Savannah <laughs> like a, a tug of war with five ropes tied in the middle. Oh, and there are groups that have their rope and they're all pulling and it kind of goes this way a while and goes that way a while and it's just, I think we need to drop our agendas and all pull the same direction and then we would get something, uh, do some amazing things. Oh, that's great. So I'm sure you probably did some of that while you were president as Rotary as well. Is there something that you remember as president that you're extremely proud of? Well, I think the two things, internally, I think I was proud that I was, I think I was a cheerleader. Emphasis on cheer. I wanted, <laughs> I wanted, um, I always thought about the person who dragged in there having a really lousy day. Mm -hmm. And I wanted that person to go back to their office glad they were there. If I accomplished that internally, that was important. Externally, you know, I think there's a difference in spending and investing. You know, you can spend your time as a Rotarian or invest it. When you spend something, it's used up and gone. When you invest it, it has a return. And when I was president, we, we invested in some young black uh, children through the 100 Black Men Project. That was the local thing we did. Did mm -hmm. a lot of other stuff. But that was, that was an investment in young lives that we'll never really see because it will take years to come about. But I think it was a great investment during that year. Well, I think that's great words, especially for us that are new to Rotary, to think of it as an investment. Mm -hmm. I think that's great. Well, I appreciate you joining us today, and this has been phenomenal. Glad to be here. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. That was awesome. Rick Monroe, we want to thank you for your, your service above self and your year as president. Um, thank you very much. Let's please rise and, and thank him. So past presidents, we're looking for you. Contact Julie and Anita and Kyle. Um, we've got a lot of interviews. I really, really want to document all this wonderful leadership in this, in this club. OK. And now it is time for our speaker. Fran Kaminsky will now introduce her. As VP of Brand Experience at SCAD, 
Our speaker oversees all exhibition initiatives, including the SCAD Museum of Art, SCAD FASH Museum of Fashion and Film, and SCAD galleries and collections in the US and France. In addition to her exhibition leadership, she also directs the university's global and marketing initiatives. Throughout her 20 year tenure at SCAD, she satisfied numerous leadership roles during which time the university had unprecedented growth. Notable initiatives include the establishment of the SCAD Museum of Art, a $26 million expansion that added 65,000 square feet of exhibition and academic space to the university. Under her leadership, she and the curatorial team transformed SCAD Museum of Art, an architectural icon that incorporates the oldest surviving antebellum railroad depot into a renowned contemporary art showcase of the avant-garde. She has led SCAD's activations at Art Basel, Miami Beach, and directed a total redesign of the university's Webby-nominated website, um, scad.edu. It's my pleasure to introduce and welcome to Rotary today's speaker, Katie Carrie Heron, SCAD's Vice President of Brand Experience. Thank you so much for inviting me here to speak. I'm so glad to meet all of you. It's so impressive, so impressive. So I understand that this month you've been talking about art and culture. So um, there's a lot of art and culture at SCAD. So I'm going to start, though, today with the SCAD Museum of Art. So this year, um, it marks our first de uh, decade. We're 10 years old. So by a show of hands, will you please let me know if you have never been to the SCAD Museum of Art? I'm not going to shame anybody. I'm not going to shame anybody. I just want to know what I'm dealing with here today. OK, <laughs> thank you. Um, let's see here. Hmm. Oh, I'm not good at this, am I? We're going to play a little game. We're going to do a true and false. So um, as I say each one of these, you can hold up your hand and say true or false, and um, I'll call on you. So. SCAD Museum of Art showcases SCAD student work. Is that true or false? Correct. That's correct. JJ, will you please hand the lady a hat? So <clears throat> that's correct. We showcase, um, uh, through our first decade, we showed over 100 artists. And these artists are international artists from all around the world. When you come to the Sky Museum of Art, you'll see artists that are incredibly established in their career. They have shown at the Whitney. They've shown at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. They've shown at the Guggenheim. They've even been asked by their country to represent their countries at the uh, Venice Biennale, which is one of the most important contemporary art showcases in the world and happens every other year and happens to be happening this year in Venice. So you can see some of the names on here. One of the really important things to note is these are all living artists. There are a couple on there that aren't living. Obviously, Frederick Douglass did not visit Scad Museum of Art. We wish he had, but he did not. Um, otherwise, everyone else on this list are people who have actually come to Savannah and visited Sky Museum of Art. So it's very important for us to have a contemporary art museum that, that also um, has programming for the community and for our students. So the next question, true or false, Sky Museum of Art showcases only paintings. That's correct, JJ. So, <laughs> SCAD Museum of Art showcases a variety of shows. So each season, we really think about what would make a dynamic experience for our guests. So in this instance, this is an immersive um, experience here. This is all string. It's just red string, but she's brilliant. And it was an incredible show. Here's a sculpture piece by Dustin Yellen. Um, Fashion, we have fashion exhibitions. Uh, this show is uh, just closing now, but it was uh, Christian Siriano. 
another um, immersive sculptural piece. Here's a new media piece. And then just some fun, which is wigs, um, all put together that creates an immersive experience. More fashion. This is a show that was put together by, uh, by Andre Leon Talley, who unfortunately just passed in the last week, who is one of our board of trustees. Outlander, so we had the premiere of the season of Outlander, for those of you who know it, and then had the costume exhibition of that, which was incredible. More fashion. You see more sculptural pieces and environment. And to the right, you see a piece that has just come down, um, but this exhibition was about um, Eve's Klein photo. I, I didn't know this photo before this. I'm not an art historian, but I'm trying to de demonstrate to all of you that there's something for everyone. So this is not intimidating a situation. You, you can go to the museum and our docents are all students will engage with you and tell you all about the shows. So perhaps it's just to you a beautiful, um, and that's fine, or maybe you hate it, but the docents will tell you the story um, that the artist, what their intention was, and um, each, time, each time you come to the museum, you'll see 10 exhibitions. So this isn't a one-room exhibition. There's plenty to see. So there's even video work. Okay, the next question. Sky Museum of Art is only uh, the only exhibition space open to the public. True or false? False, that's right. This gentleman back here. So we also have Gutstein Gallery. Maybe, I'm sure you've passed by it. It's across from the Trustees Theater on, on uh, Broughton Street and we show uh, normally group shows in this space, and it's open you know, throughout the week. Here's some, in, some install shots. Some are a little weird. Um, granted, it was fun. These were hammocks. Um, and then you know, basic photography, printmaking. We also have SCAD Fash Lacoste. So we have a fashion museum in Atlanta, which we'll get to in just a moment, but we also have recently opened a museum of fashion in Lacoste, which is in the south of France. So any of you who are visiting the Luberon Valley, stop by. And then we have SCAD Fash. I know lots of you travel for work, maybe not in the last couple of years, but hopefully are ramping up. And um, this is in, the SCAD Fash is in Midtown Atlanta. And it, it primarily shows fashion or fashion-related um, work. So this is, is a, a, a photography show actually, actually by Albert Watson. And uh, this, this show was, black, uh, was a black, these are all Black Panther costumes. It was a um, costume designer, Ruth E. Carter, who is a really celebrated costume designer, has done work um, for many films that all of us know, Malcolm X and just uh, Selma. And um, these are actually the costumes from the Black Panther movie that we had on display, as well as many, many other things in the, in the building. Rihanna's dress that she met, wore to the Met. Peter Carden show, this is all at SCAD Fash. Okay, next question. SCAD Museum of Art rotates shows once a year. Anybody know? Anybody want to raise their hand? Nobody wants a hat? Just try it. Okay. False, yes. Good job. Um, so <laughs> we, rotate, we rotate twice a year. So um, we typically have a season in the fall, and then we have a season in um, right at this point in the winter. So all of our shows are actually changing at this moment. And in uh, February, at the end of February, we have what we call Define Art, which is the three-day program that um, every one of the artists, the 10 artists, come, in to, come to Savannah, and we have programs and gallery talks, and it's all free and open to the public, that, all of that programming. So the other thing, uh, some other things that you can experience is SCAD is SCAD story. So just 
Um, across the square, there's a SCAD story which tells the story through a 3D experience about how SCAD started. It, oh, good. And it's free. It's free. It's such a great thing to do. Like if you come downtown sometimes for church, go to the museum, go to SCAD story. Um, the Lucas, so I, I wanted to point out that the Lucas Theater for the Arts um, is, SCAD operates the Lucas and um, other theaters, and we're really committed to, to um, preserving the theater district in Savannah. But you also can go to the, th the theater for things every week, there's something. And you go to Savannah Box Office and you can come to whatever you'd like. This year we're having a celebration of our, of our first decade on um, April 21st. Our first decade is also Dr. Evans, who's here with us today, has um, the Walter O. Evans Center for African American Studies. And uh, so we have a gallery that is dedicated to black culture at the museum and only shows that each quarter. So we were talking about the different things that you'll see each, each um, time you come to the museum. And um, that is also celebrating its 10th year. We have SCAD style. So I thought I would just show you some of the things that we have going on during the spring. There's so always so much going on at SCAD and so much culture and things for everyone to participate in. But SCAD style is we bring in luminaries and heads of the industry in design. And for three days, we have uh, panels and lectures and other events that bring in all types of people that, uh, and again, it is free and open to the public, every single one of these sessions. Then hopefully some of you have been to Sidewalk Arts Festival, and we're so excited to say that we have a permit to have it in person this year, and it is on April the 23rd in Forsyth Park. For those of you who maybe haven't been, the, um, the premise of it is that our students are in competition with each other and they draw uh, chalk squares and, um, and then they're awarded. We also on May the 6th have St Sand Arts Festival. This happens at Tybee and our students are in competition and create sand sculptures. So all of these things, um, to find out more about what we do, really honestly, the best thing is to follow us on scad.edu, on Instagram or on Facebook, and also scadmoa. Um, we have at scadmoa, um, and you can follow us and find out all about the new exhibitions and all the things that we're gonna be doing um, for the future. So does anybody have any questions? No questions? What are the hours? So we're open on uh, from Sunday and Monday, and we're closed only on Tuesdays. And then, um, but it's 10 to 5, um, except Sunday where it's 12 to 5. Good question. Yes. Oh, yeah, sure. So each year, SCAD does do an activation during Miami Art Basel. And um, for the last couple of years, we've done it at what they call Design Miami. So if anybody's ever been, so Art Miami Beach is the largest art fair in the US. So contemporary art galleries come together and really they're selling work, but it's, it's huge. It's in the convention center at Miami Beach. So across from the, that convention center, there's another fair called Design Miami which is amazing. There's lots of little pop-up uh, um, fairs so that sort of the most established people get to be in um, Art Basel. And you know the lower maybe emerging artists would be at a different fair. So we, SCAD um, participates in Design Miami. And so we have a booth and we, um, we invite high schools from the area to come and we tell them about the art and how they could do this and for their career and um, does that answer your question somewhat but it's yeah it's a really it's it's everyone emerges everybody comes together it was really um, this year it was in person and it was it was wonderful to be able to see all your contacts and yes 
Yes, yes, I sure can. It is a, we, we have been so lucky. So when we started the museum, it really, the impetus for it was Dr. Evans gifting us part of his incredible collection. So when you come to the museum, the first gallery um, is the Center for African American Studies, the Evans Center for African American Studies. So we do use the collection to um, exhibit shows, but we also do a lot of solo shows. So Dr. Evans wanted wanted for wanted us to um, highlight African American artists, which we have done. Maybe one time he would say we didn't we did it from the diaspora, but he probably gave us permission. I hope he did. Um, but otherwise, we have done we've shown only African American artists. So twice a year there's a new show, and um, the collection is studied by our students. Um, any professor can tell us at any time that they are interested in seeing a particular work. He has, um, you know, masters of African American contemporary and modern art, and we're so lucky to have it. Is there anything else you would add, Dr. Evans? <laughs> And, and he supports us in so many ways. So we're very lucky. Other questions? Is, is your collection, Dr. Evans, is it curated? Um, I, I was fortunate with Leadership Savannah to go and attend a, a lecture that um, pulled together so many aspects of American history and mm -hmm. um, presentation and anecdotal about the lives of these artists. Does that happen on a recurring basis? Well, I think it happens really globally. We participate in exhibitions, not just here at SCAD, but throughout the country. And uh, over the past maybe 10 years or so in uh, Europe, and, uh, and this year coming, this year in South Africa as well as some of Europe. Yeah, we have several shows here this year. And in some cases, uh, entirely. Uh, we have these shows entirely curated. So, Dr. Evans is a curator as well, and he has he has chosen very selectively what he's collected over the years and has become great friends with many of the people that he's collected. But not only is has he does he collect art, but also letters and you know other other memor not mem that memorabilia is not the word but um you know other important documents important documents that support the live uh, live of the artist or um just in inc incredible collection so he does loan it out to really prestigious institutions we're talking about you know all all, all tor sorts of of institutions that are able to share in his work. And we also, um, you know, part of us get, getting that gift was that we would also loan our work to other institutions, which we do quite often, um, is we, they loan it for a show. And um, there are many scholars of, of African-American art and they've been to SCAD and, and they've also lectured on his work at, at many institutions. Questions? No. Oh, oh. Oh. We actually have a speaker's gift for you. Oh this gosh. is from the Candler Oak, which is, of course, 300 years old. It is from the Savannah uh, Tree Foundation, and it's part of um, the Rotary's area of focus, the environment. So plan Thank it with you. care. Thank, Thank you very you so much. much. Thank you for speaking. It was very interesting. And Dr. Evans, it's great to see you in the audience, too. Okay, we've got a few um, announcements before we before I hit the bell. District conference is in April. Uh, it will be held in Augusta this year, and I need two raffle prizes. Any ideas, like a Mercedes or something? <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be thinking about that. I'll be happy to drive it up there. Okay, um, number two, we need at least 30 volunteers to help plant 
the uh, Live Oaks in Wormslow on February 19th. Uh, rain or shine, it starts at noon. Carolyn has a sign up up there. I'd really like to see as many Rotarians out there as possible. Uh, $3,500 was raised at a party with a purpose for Union Mission at our, at our last party. Number four, we have a tenant, well, we do have a tour to the Savannah Hilton Head Airport on Friday, March 4th. Uh, we're, how many of you have ever seen the graves on the runway? It's pretty cool. So it's only going to take an hour. We meet at 11 o'clock and um, let Captain know. I just assigned you, Captain, if you can attend. And oh, I also want to congratulate Kimberly Ballard Washington. It was a great Georgia Trend article, if y'all haven't seen it. It was a wonderful article about uh, Savannah State. Uh, keeping up with uh, service above self, our civic leader, Bill Cathcart, will be honored at the 17th Annual Opportunity Awards Gala at Savannah Tech on Friday, April 22nd. It, uh, it is being honored, it will be honored, it will honor deserving leaders uh, in the community for a lifetime of service in creating opportunities for others to succeed. So this, the uh, proceeds will support their military scholarship. And I heard the Kreitz run is this February 4th, is that right? I thought I saw David in here. And the End Market Arena Community Day is February 5th at 2 p.m. And the last one, did you know that President Gerald Ford was a Rotarian? Meeting adjourned. <laughs>